what I also want to tell them is, but I'm not here to run you out of town. No. If you call me and you have a concern, I will treat you fairly, yeah. but I will treat you no differently than yeah. I treat the new business owner who wants to open up, or the person on the north side of the city, or the homeless person, or anybody else. Anybody that calls should be treated the same. Well, that is the fear, and, 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 and that is clearly the fear, okay? Because if I'm a newbie in town, and, I, and I've got my restaurant, and I'm having a problem, okay, and I go to the mayor, well, I, what I expect is I'm going to get the, the city to deal with me. Not other people who used to be with the city because they got other businesses in the town coming and saying, no, you don't want him to do this or rip his sign down or anything That's else. why we have empty that's, storefronts. Exact, that's why we're not moving exactly forward. Exactly right. And that, and that's, but that's the scare. They know that that stuff is going to go away. So your influence, your old influence is not going to be there. But, but you're not going to be... I'm not coming after you, you to no, run you out of no, business. I know it. I just want you to be treated the same as the person next to you. Like you you'll develop business. People don't get it. You know, it's like, it's it, it, it it's like being afraid of another. If you're a restaurant owner, it was something I was. I used to. If you're a restaurant owner, and you open a restaurant. You got a restaurant. You got a family, and a guy opens up across the street. Most people are afraid of that. Oh, he got it. No, it's the stupidest thing to be. You want that guy because he's going to help you. More people are coming down the area. They change. That's they right. go to different things. And if another guy opens up, you want him to open up. They don't get it that the more people you attract, they try to diversity. It's, it's an oligarchy. It, yeah, exactly you right. Know, a monopoly is one person dominates. It's an oligarchy is a small group dominates. Dominate. But both are bad because they stifle competition, they stifle growth, they're unfair in their treatment. Absolutely. And that's what needs to be changed. But there's more to it than just that. It's not just, you know, the old businesses versus the new businesses. It's also the idea that New London planning has often looked at each little property as a tax generator. You know, if a Muslim center wants to open in one of those empty storefronts, say, no, it's a nonprofit, it's another church, oh, yeah, that's or, what they or, did. or whatever, I would, and they drive I, them out. Yeah, well. But here's the thing that they don't understand. I would rather have an art gallery that's a nonprofit or a religious center that's a nonprofit than have an empty storefront. Because if somebody's in there, people are coming there. They're people coming there, and, there's, and it's cultural expansion. Can you imagine? They didn't realize. When, when they did not allow, and I know the Muslim thing, I, I'm not sure you've got the whole background, but when they did not allow them to open up their uh, uh, mosque, okay, they moved all those people that would have shopped, ate, did all kinds of things here over to Groton. Mm -hmm. Where is the brain power in that? Instead of building your city, be, and it was all about being a nonprofit, well, we're not going to get this tax. Your tax is nothing compared to the amount of money that the people there are going to spend in your city, and you're going to get and a it's, different it's, way. It's also one of the problems that I've consistently talked about in this campaign is short term decision making has been the way to go in New London and there has not been that long term perspective. If you fill up the storefronts, the property values go up. Go up. The spillover effect goes to the businesses. The money, tax revenues to the city eventually go up. Go up. But if you look at it as, oh, that one place is not going to generate revenue because it's a nonprofit going in, you're missing the whole point. We need a vibrant diverse community, which we have in our population, and all these places want to come in, and we push them away. They fought the hygienic. Think about that. Oh, absolutely. Look at well, the it's hygienic. the only thing that's holding downtown oh, together. Oh, my God. The only the events. thing, the events that are holding downtown together. Fantastic And they fought events. Finney and those guys, and they didn't mm -hmm. want them there, and they trashed them, and they were terrible. And fought, guess what? Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful event. The and all those people, Let where do they go you. when they go out of the hygienic? The they go to the bars, the restaurants, the I, shops. Of course. They, they all around, the they money. spend the money. The, the steam, the ships come, coming in here, what, okay? They don't realize. 
when you bring people into a nothing place and you don't have shops for them, you haven't built up your city. I know, my cousin runs one of the biggest tour businesses in the country. It's up in Boston. Books all those stuff, all those trips on the ships and all that stuff, right? They brought the liners here. Everybody said, oh, it's wonderful. The people love the place and everything else. It was a lie. The people said, why are we going to New London? There's nothing there. There's nothing for you to do. Oh, the diverse restaurants. Well, you got three restaurants. Uh, you got empty buildings. There's no shopping and everything else like that. We got people around here run, yelling PR. Oh, no, those ships wanted to be. No, they didn't. And that's why they're not here. Mm -hmm. They're not here. You need a place that has the diversity and things. It's, and, it's that. It's that. You know, Oh, and, 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 it, and, it, and it frustrates me because just like with the eminent domain case, it was the same kind of idea with the cruise ships, you know, we're going to get the big quick fix. Yeah, quick fix. And there is no big quick fix. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to build from the ground up. You've got to build a diverse small business economy, a diverse filled up downtown with cultural things happening, with events happening. You know, people said, oh, what, what are you going to do? And I said, well, we should have a pride festival. We should have a yeah. Latino pride festival. People say, what, a parade, a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a parade. Yeah, yeah. parade. Activity, yeah, activity, because the more stuff that's going on, the more people come in, Sales fill up those shops. Yeah, we were just talking about, uh, on the other show, uh, 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 Reverend uh, and uh, Jane, uh, on, uh, on Jaws, just prior to me. They were just talking about Sailfest, how, how they did well at the Boots, and everything seemed to go well this year, and, yeah. and, and everything else, and the activities in downtown. With what we've got, talking, why aren't we doing it all the time? Not, yeah, all the time. People are talking about the, the, the new thing with the farmer's market and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Okay, we should be doing bigger, better, and continuous. Mm -hmm. The more, the merrier. The, it seems like sometimes in New London when an idea comes up, you get more attacks on why it can't be done. <laughs> yeah, As really. opposed to hopefully having a mayor, if I'm elected, that says, how do we get this done? Right. Not why should this not happen, mm -hmm. or what are the multiple problems with it, which inevitably leads to it doesn't happen, as opposed to saying, okay, we have some challenges, okay, there's some things we have to get done to make this work, but let's approach it from the standpoint of let's make this work. That shift alone in thinking would transform New London. Well, it's exactly right. You're not stuck with one idea, one way, or, 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 or it's my way or the highway. Uh, okay, you need to be open. And, and, and again, I, I, I use the word diversity all the time. The more diverse you are, the better you are. That's what people love about the city. That's our strength. That's, that's why the, I'm that's here. That's strength, of course. I mean, you know, people say to me, they say uh, the criticisms, because I know that, you know, I don't mind the truth. <laughs> Father, I don't <laughs> I mind know. the truth at all. You're a lawyer, see? Well, that, 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 I don't know if it's a lawyer. I think it's more the boxer. Yeah, well, 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 it's, well, it's, well, 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 my response is, I am from here. Not only am I from here, I chose to be here. And I chose to be here long before this office was created. And I chose it because I valued that this was a diverse place. I wanted to come. Now let me tell you something. If we have a government that values bringing in people like me, what's New London going to look like in 10 years? How many new businesses might come in? Absolutely. You know, people say we need to bring in new businesses. Right. Well, how are you going to do that? Not if you isolate people and, it, it, and, and keep them out. Right. Okay. And, and, and that, but that is what the Democratic Town Committee that I know has done. And, and it's a shame. They have not welcomed people in. They have isolated them. Family cliques dominate. Total nepotism there. You can run the names, you can look at it, and stuff like that, and I, and I can say it. And, 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 and when, when you go to the vote, when eight people from the same family are voting, you're trying to control the party that has outgrown you, and a situation right. that's outgrown. And there but, are that is, but that is, but I, I, I want to clarify, though, and specify that nothing that happened on Tuesday night was illegal. 
I oh, mean, oh, no, I'm they, not they saying. They have the provision for no, the proxy. These are the people yeah, on the board. Yeah, uh, that's exactly you know, right. You can say you think they're out of touch, but, you know, everything was done orderly. It's just I don't think that that committee right now fully reflects the city. I don't think it's, it reflects it is, the it's people not the representation that are out of the there. city. Okay, and, and, and the shame is, you're absolutely right. It is a system, uh, okay, that is difficult, but... It depends on where you are. You can either be open and new people go in. I mean, I've watched new people go into the town committee. I was on the town committee. I watched the way it operated. Well, you go on a town committee and you've got a group and everything else. You're either welcome or you're rejected. You are either pushed away or everything else like that. Now, now most people can't take the heat that it takes mm -hmm. for being part of the system. They'd rather walk away than take that. And, and when you've got a group and a family group and a bunch of people that grew up together, a bunch of townies that will reject whoever's in the room, they isolate. Who wants to be there? Who wants to contribute to that? And that's what they've done. Well, you came long before you decided to you know, support me in the race. You know, you wanted to hear what I had to say you oh, came I, to my announcement. Yes, I did. And at my announcement, I said it, and I've said it again and again and again and again throughout the campaign. I'll say it again tonight. I knew what it was going to look like coming in as a new person, especially as new as I am, and what would be said and what m people might think. The reason I decided to do it was having grown up in this region and watched New London for a long time, I knew the fear factor. I knew the absolute dread that people have when they talk about the so-called New London Democratic machine. And I just knew that there are probably a lot of good people out there who could run for this job, but they won't run because they're scared, or they'll run, but they won't follow all the way through. And it happened Tuesday night. You know, Mr. Pastro is an excellent candidate, but in the end, he decided to go on the council rather than primary, so on and so forth. It takes a lot to sit in that room, face a whole bunch of very powerful people, mm -hmm. and say, I disagree with you. Mm -hmm. I don't mind that you disagree with me. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have an election. And we're going to work it out. And we're, <laughs> we're going to work out. it out the old democratic way. You know? that, and, and, but that is not easy. And having been in public service most of my adult life, I can tell you all of my adult life, it's rough. I mean, they're going to protect their power. People don't give up these fiefdoms. They don't just hand it over. You know, they're going to fight to keep their influence. They're going to fight to keep their system going. And I expect that. And it might get rough and it might get nasty. Who knows? I don't deal in the nasty politics, but I can't control what other people do. Uh, and, you know, people have families, people have kids, people have jobs, reputations, careers. Who wants to stand up there and risk everything taking on a machine that most people think cannot be beat? So that's why I'm doing this, because somebody has to. Because I believe in my heart, and I believe that the numbers bear it out, really, and will bear it out on primary night. The majority of the people want it. But somebody's got to be the one to step up and give it a, a shot. Well, as you know, and I've talked to you in, in, in what we do, and we have been doing it for every year that we've had election, we poll. We make calls. We have a couple of people that make calls for us. We have a list of names and stuff like that. We started very small years ago and built up, and we call back and stuff like that. Well, we've polled over 3,000 people uh, so far, uh, OK? Uh, we know where you stand, and, and you stand substantially ahead. Now, this is across the board. This is not just Democrats. It's Democrats. Uh, 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 independents and Republicans. Across the board, you would be both people right now if there was an election held today, hands down. Because across the board, uh, you, would, you, would be, you would beat them. In the Democratic Party, I don't know. And that's why I suggested that you jump ship, mm -hmm. which you look to me like, yeah, you're crazy. We got to stay with this ship. Okay, well, uh, that's a different. That's a different thing. It's different, okay, but, it's but it's it's. I I honestly think though, um, and maybe 
Mr. Bracetto will prove me wrong, but I honestly believe when I'm out there talking to people on doorsteps, I'm hearing the same thing that I heard with the mayoral charter change vote. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm for it, but it'll never pass. Oh, I'm going to vote for it, but I'm in the minority. And that old guard, quote unquote, or that old machine, or whatever phraseology that the people use, I don't use it. They use it to me. And they're just assuming that it's not going to work. But on election night, the results come in, and three to one, it passed. So I'm hearing the same thing now. I knock on door, someone says, well, you got my vote, but I don't think you're ever going to overcome that old machine. You know, and I sit there and say, but, but if everyone's saying they vote for me, I, I, I you, think you, it's you, a little different. Well, well, we, so, so it's going to be tough. It's going to be very, very tough. And I think every Democrat has to know that you got to come out and vote. You can't take this for granted. But we do have a very good shot. And if you come out and vote, it can happen. It can happen. And you can change things. And, 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 and my view is no. And, and, and they've listened to me for years. They know that you folks can change stuff. You, you guys changed it before. You've put people out of office. You put new people in office. We, the group that watches me, you have done a lot in this city over the yet last eight years. And you can do more. You've got to get out there. You've got to help. These are important times. All these elections. Today, it's the most important time to vote. You know, I get mad. I jump up and scream. I go crazy. Because, especially with poor people, you think you've got no power. That vote is power, and you got to use the vote. And if you're not registered, you got to register. Well, think you know? about this. You can prove this to people. You oh, can absolutely okay. prove this to people. In the last governor's primary between Ned Lamont and Dan Malloy in 2010, in the entire city of New London, 963 people voted. Yeah. 500 votes won that. Now think of how many thousands, thousands of people live in New London who don't vote. How many thousands of Democrats don't vote don't in primaries vote. that are already registered oh, as Democrats? Oh, yeah. It's, well, we have 5,000. We know we're roughly 5,000. 5, 5,200 5, yeah, some. something. Oh, you got the count. Oh, I got the list. You got the, I got the list, too. We got, what, 12,000 voters in the city, yeah. something. 27,600 okay, people. 27. Thousand six hundred. I thought we're down to twenty-four. Okay. I thought we were at twenty-seven six in the uh, recent census. Uh, but I thought we dropped. We might have but, dropped. Okay. But, but anyway, but as voter-wise, uh, our voters, registered voters, are well twelve thousand plus. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, f five thousand, whatever you said on the things. Maybe three thousand uh, Republicans and the others un undeclared or independent, what we call independent. So you know that there's a lot of votes out there. Yeah. And you can make a difference. Yeah. In the primary, you have to be a registered Democrat. Uh, OK? <laughs> and don't do what I did last time. I had to re-register when I got mad there. Yeah, you know, I, I'm a registered Democrat. <laughs> OK, you have to be a registered Democrat to vote the primary. And, and, and if we you're, and, if and you're we not registered or if you're an independent, yeah. you can switch over right up to the day before. I have the voter cards. No. When oh, we're wow, having any event, as do you, right? We uh, have the cards. People can register. We, we have people going to go door to door and stuff like that, and yeah. that's right. And that's right. You can make the switch right up yeah. to. Uh, up to. Uh, the only thing you can't is if you are a registered in another party, Republican, Green, Libertarian. That deadline has already passed. Okay. But we did have a number of Republicans, uh, most notably city historian Sally Ryan, right. you know, who that's wrote to the paper even, right. you know. Lifelong registered Republican, 82, uh, I believe, years old. Yeah, God bless her. Switched her voter registration because she wants to vote in this primary. Right. Um, this primary is going to be very, very important because here's the brass tacks of it. Uh, Rob Perro is a very strong candidate. He is, and he does well in the debates, even in your own polling. It shows yeah, he's yeah, a second he's place guy. Second you know. place guy. Yeah. But yeah, right. he could win. But think about this. Democrats outnumber Republicans about 5 to 1. It's actually more like 1,200, I think, registered mm -hmm. Republicans. In head-to-head -head races in the city of New London, going back 40 years, the lowest vote percentage that a Democrat gets is usually 62%, and usually have a 68%, I think, is the average for like Ernie Hewitt and his re-election numbers, right. and, you know, et cetera, and so on and so forth. So the Republicans are already split 
three ways in the general election. You have the incumbent Republican mayor, Marty o